Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user ACK in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in this system. And this one is called the Entity System Redux. So let's see what he has prepared for us here. Sounds interesting, the picture looks interesting, let's go and have a look. So it should be in here already, let's have a look, where are we? There it is entity system interesting okay what have we got right taking time to load okay pretty interested here what have we got oh okay oh oh hello right cool right what have we got the entity oh i like this already okay right this is a remake of an old system I made. It's almost entirely different from the original system, except for the concept of the living star. The entity is a living star is able to communicate with us in Morse code using solar flares. Its tendrils of influence infest every single corner of the system, causing most of the strange properties and features of the planets. That's cool. That's a really cool concept. All right, so first up, we've got Coron here. Coron. Here it is. Gas giant. A burning gas giant circling the entity in mere months. It, not much is known beyond its top cloud layer. It's got a moon called Quelix. The only moon. It's just as hot as its parent planet. It has been found to emit X-rays from its surface despite having zero radioactive materials in its crust. Okay. But he did say the star made some weird things happen. Next up, we got Orath. A small, hot, Mars-like world with a thin, wispy atmosphere. It has been found to absorb all radio signals that reach its surface. Okay. Next up, we got your, your Bonner. It's got ocean. Okay. The only planet is system with life, however, every single organism on its surface is a plant. There are no animals or fungi or even bacteria. Despite this, the plants on its surface still behave as these organisms are there. Um, branches might sag if something is hanging there. Fruit might twist off, though, for being grabbed. And plants might grow tall from a nitrogen cycle that isn't happening. Okay, next up we've got Trev over here. The Lonely Moon. Easy identical by its striking yellow colour. It is one of the most beautiful objects in the system, no, uh, not in this universe, so no, the universe, and provides a standard view of its parent planet. Recently, we have discovered that it's impossible to talk about this moon in a negative light. It just goes to show how great this moon truly is. Or maybe the star is manipulating them. Who knows? So there's a view of the parent planet from behind as well. Looking good. Okay. Cool. Next up, we got Iris. There we go. That's where we started in the uh, initial uh, loading in. A small gas giant not too far from the entity with three small moons circling above its skies. It received its name from the strange cloud patterns around its south pole resembling an eye. And I did notice that. The eye is on this side. If we just rotate it around. That looked like an eye. There it is. Pretty cool. Right. First of the moons. Morag. First of the three moons. It's a red moon barely clinging onto a wispy atmosphere. Looking good. Next up, we've got Crux. The second moon of Iris. It has a very thin, icy crust that is not just frozen. Elise, Elise is the third and final moon of Iris. Um, Iris, sorry. It has been noted that no matter what people refer to as, she is alive, even though she's just a moon of Iris. Okay. Next up, we've got Scarif. Oh, interesting name for sure. Sure, you some of you guys know where that name's from. It's a scarif, right? A super F orbiting just shy, thick of the asteroid belt. It is a very thick atmosphere that traps enough heat to keep liquid water on its surface. Said water is completely non toxic and tastes very sweet. Okay, so moons we got Rion here, a very small purple moon orbiting closely around the scarif. Rocks collected from its surface are known to smell like apples. Cool, uh, and then we got Kerf. Another very small moon orbs in Scarf, despite appearing grey on all cameras, people swear that it's green. Yeah, okay. And next up we got Eerie over here. The smallest major moon in the system. People have described looking at it as being eerie, hence the name. Okay. And then there's one more. Over here. Mole. The largest moon in Scarf with large red plains covering the surface. Cool. And then we got 
Bonvask. Over here, past the asteroid belt. Largest planet in the NC system. Slightly larger than Jupiter in mass and radius. It has four large moons and one small shepherd moon guarding its rings. Hey, there it is. Little shepherd moon. Check that out. Nice. Keeps those rings in check. Alright, then we got the first circle. Oh, wait a second. There we go. That's better. So, Pleuris. The most massive moon in this star system. has a thick atmosphere and large ice planes coating the surface. Cool. We got uh, Krenst. The second major moon of Bonvask. Its icy grey surface and thin atmosphere seems to remind people of toothpaste. <laughs> Then we got Tribon, the second most massive moon of Bonvask is an atmosphere and this most notable will have its very own moon. Really nice, there it is. Then we got Drav, the largest and least massive moon of Bonvask. There's not much to say about this great ice moon other than its size and wispy atmosphere. Okay. Then we got Oron. Over here. A light blue gas giant slightly smaller than Jupiter. Recordings of winds have revealed that it sounds like wailing and screaming. Oh god. Prask. A small icy moon that isn't very noteworthy. Some say it's too forgettable, but that's likely because it's so... Wait, what's I inputting again? Uh, who cares? Anyway, going to read this entry anyways. Interesting. Isn't very noteworthy. Yeah, okay. Next up we got uh, Nixon. The largest moon of Oron is a very thick turquoise atmosphere and a pretty purple surface. That's a beauty, actually. I really like it. I like that colour. Nice thick atmosphere version as well. Looking good. Very nice indeed. Cool. Oh, that's, uh, look how far this goes. Wow. Right. Um, yep, yeah, so Nixon. So we've done that. So next up, we've got Urnbass. It's better... To, um, a greenish yellow moon of orc on landing on this moon is difficult as being near its surface causes confusion. Very strange. Then you brought your bonds. It's better than you've been us in every way. It doesn't cause confusion. It's more massive and just call it in general than Urbanus. All digital information about Urbanus changes to portray it as better than Urbanus unless it's in parenthesis. So that star, man, that living star manipulates data and people's thoughts on stuff. That's interesting. Next up, we've got Krint. An icy word about the size of Earth. It has a small atmosphere and a small ring system, as well as one closely orbiting moon, which it's tidy locked to, despite the moon's small size. So we've got Rift down here. The only moon of Krint. Every time its name is said, a faint guitar riff can be heard. <laughs> very, very bizarre. Okay. Mernis. Let's see, moving over here now. A Saturn-sized blue gas giant that can't help but remind people of the sea. Nice. Then we got Mornis. Or Marnis. The second moon... Oh, no, this is Mornis, sorry. Um, the first moon of Mernis. <laughs> Several people reported ma moss growing on the surface despite having no atmosphere and being extremely cold. Right, now we got Marnis, which is this one. Easy identical among the other moons due to its reddish coloration. Okay. Then we've got Mernis, Mernis, down here. An icy purple moon that gains coloration from a fine amethyst dust coating its surface. Then we've got Mernis. <laughs> oh my god, it's so similar. Thank god he set out to say some of these. Uh, largest moon, which orbits where its parent planet clockwise. Whether its strange inclination or retrograde orbit are from the entity's infants or it just being a captured object is still up for debate. Cool. Next up, we got Tri and Sty. They're in a Barry Center. I saw them earlier down here. Never. Don't zoom into Barry Centers. It gets very buggy. There you go. Right. There's a moon between those guys as well. So there's Sty and Tri. <laughs> so a gas. One's a gas giant. The other one is also a gas giant. Okay. So they both there. Two blue binary gas giants orbiting the entity. Tri is known to have small diamond shards in its lower ages, and the Sty's clouds are filled with small coal chunks. So a lot of carbon-based stuff here. And then we've got Naif, the moon of both Tri and Star. It is a rather unmarkable icy moon. So there it is there. Cool. Next up we've got Tassa. Over here. A small dwarf planet on the outer reaches of the system. The red planes on its surface are caused by a mixture of fallings and perfectly fresh, non-toxic and edible goat meat. What? 
Scientists are still unsure if this meat can be sold as vegetarian. What? As it does not come from animal. That's really weird. <laughs> that star man, that's made some weird things here. The low moon of Tassa. So that's over here. An icy asteroid belt that people swear is the size of Earth, even though it clearly isn't. Very strange. Next up, we got Zonk. Exonk. I don't know how to say this one. A very far away and cold ice shine. It admit. Um, it would not have been discovered if it didn't emit a constant radio signal. The radio signal consists of three minutes of static before a Morse code message playing three times and then it repeats. The signal message is that symbol there, which translates to this is where it received its name. Okay, so it, okay, gotcha, and it's got some moons as well. Fright. A small moon which causes fear in anyone who lands on its surface. Many horror attractions could move into this cold moon to take advantage of this effect. God. <laughs> Cross. Similar to fright, except it makes people who land extremely irritable. This causes them to be likely to get angry and violent. Man, imagine visiting both of those at the same day. Then we got Ainu. The last moon it is probably made of ice and this large sugar crystals poking at the surface. Yeah, that's probably the nicer one to go to. <laughs> cool. Right, so now we've got additions. March 28th, 2412. New planet discovered. Working names Morsk and Onk. So that's these guys over here. New planet name chosen. So it's that. Then we got the data added to archive. Communication received from the NC. Message from the NC. They will arrive soon. Communication received from the NC. The first has arrived. So what? So that's a few days after this was named. That's spooky. I want to know more. I want a sequel. I want to know more about this star, man. <laughs> I want to know more about the entity. That's such a cool concept, and no one's ever done that. That's really cool. Give me more. I want to. I want to know more. That's really cool. But anyways, massive thank you to the creator of this system. So that was the user, Ak Ak A C K. Massive thank you to them for sending in the system. Really enjoyed that. I want to know more. Give me more. But with that all said, then, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed this as much as I have. Let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's video. And if you um, did enjoy it as well, make sure to subscribe. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers as well. But with that all said, done. Massive thank you again for sending this system in. Really appreciated it. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.